Stephanie Endgame. My entire life, I sincerely believed that if anyone truly sought to find God with all their heart, soul, and mind, they would find him. Everyone seeking out the truth would see that Yahweh, the Christian God, was the one true God. Moreover, God wants to be found. He desires to have a personal relationship with us. As it says in Revelations 3.20, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, and we will share a meal together as friends. I sincerely believed that if you gathered a group of honest, truth-seeking people that belonged to different faiths and showed them the majesty of nature, such as a sunset, they would all come to the same conclusion. When people of different faiths did not reach the same conclusion as Christians, I believed they were being deceived, were dishonest, or were ingenuine. In my mind, atheists, Hindus, Muslims, and people of all other religions never saw the Christian God because they did not want to believe. As it says in Romans 1.20, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see His invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature, so they have no excuse for not knowing God. One day, a colleague of mine, an atheist, came into my office and asked me to show him proof of God. He told me that despite all his efforts, he has never found any evidence for God. I had many conversations with this individual, but soon realized he was sincere in his desire to know the truth. This was the first time I met an atheist that was willfully seeking out the God of the Bible, but not finding him. This individual was sincere, earnest, and intelligent. Yet despite everything, even though he sought the truth, God remained hidden. Why would God remain hidden to someone looking for him? If God was truly wanting a relationship with this individual, why wouldn't God reveal himself? The default Christian response was, it's not God's timing. However, becoming more critical of my typical Christian apologetics, that response did not make much sense. If you were a small child reaching out to the hand of your long-lost parent, would the parent not reach out their hand in response? When I was a young teen and felt like my life was in despair, I had a vision of Jesus reaching out and grabbing my hand without any hesitation. But why wouldn't that be true for everyone? I then realized that those and other religions were not dishonest. They were earnestly seeking God in the truth. But the God they saw was the God of their own religion, not mine. Those in other religions also had experiences. They saw visions of their own prophets and messiahs. They felt the presence of a higher being, and they heard the voice of their own God speak to them. They had experiential proof that their God existed. These individuals looked at the same sunset I saw and came to a different conclusion. I thought, perhaps people are misinterpreting signs from God. But then again, I could be misinterpreting things as well. What if a different God was trying to send a message? Or what if there were no signs at all? What if the sunset was simply a sunset, an effect of the rotation of the earth as it spun on its axis, and there was no divine intervention at all? Could I simply be adding meaning to nature? If I hear a knocking at the door but cannot see anything when I open it, is it right to conclude that it is God, and not simply the wind knocking a branch against the door? I asked myself many times, how do you know Christianity is the true religion? My response always was, because I'm earnest, the true God would show me the way if it was not Christianity. But if I was Muslim, I would have the same answer and still believe God was telling me Islam was the correct religion. I began to process the experiences of those in other religions. Why wouldn't divine revelations lead everyone to the same God? If the God of Christianity was true, why didn't all theists agree on what kind of God he was? Why wouldn't a Muslim, when praying, experience the revelation of the one true God? After all, revelation does not necessitate acceptance. And that was it wasn't it? God's test of man is ultimately acceptance, not awareness. We are currently faced with two challenges from God. One, does God exist? And two, if God exists, will I obey? So first you must overcome the challenge of being aware of a God, and then you must decide whether you would obey that God or not. Some will argue that if you were truly aware of God, then you would have no choice but to obey. But we do see God revealing himself to people in the Bible, and they still chose not to obey. Well, perhaps people do have an impression of God on their hearts. Throughout history, people have believed in some form of God, and perhaps a belief in any God is sufficient or close enough to warrant a meeting with God in the afterlife. No, that doesn't seem correct either. 
Simply a history of people turning to gods because of the unknown doesn't necessitate that God or gods exist. People believe in magic when they can't explain some phenomenon. We naturally see patterns in the world around us, part of how we work in order to survive. This is why we can see faces in clouds, trees, or other inanimate objects. Additionally, people don't have the innate sense of the same god, and they do not always attribute the unknown to a god. Even if every human did, this wouldn't mean it was correct. If God is a loving God, and he desires a relationship, he would want to be found. He would be outside the door, always knocking. He'd be ever-present. He'd be ever-persistent. You would not be able to turn your head without seeing. You would not be able to misinterpret a knock for the wind outside. There would be no reason for unbelief, only the decision to follow. When you compare a hidden God to an imaginary one, there is no difference. Prior to the conversation with my colleague, I had believed that Alvin Plantinga had solved this issue. In Bible college, we were taught that Plantinga was the leading Christian philosopher on issues such as these, and I held him in high regard. He argues that your natural knowledge of God has been compromised by sin, and we can no longer sense God without the Holy Spirit. Sort of as if your divine sense vision is blurry, and you need glasses of faith in order to see properly. I've come to realize that argument is completely absurd. First, I would consider this to be a special pleading fallacy. I have psychic powers, but you have to truly believe I have psychic powers before they will work. To accept this line of reasoning, you essentially need to believe in order to be convinced, but you can't believe until you are convinced. Does it help the emperor to pretend to believe when he wears his new clothes? Second, this type of reasoning would inevitably lead us to believe in all sorts of nonsense. If I believe that blue aliens are watching me when I'm outside, then when I go outside and get the feeling of being watched, my belief that blue aliens are watching me is confirmed. A belief can only ever be reinforced and never corrected using this line of reasoning. This is the sort of exploitation that becomes evident when you look at extreme religious cults such as Scientology. Third, even if we assume God is hidden only until you believe he exists, then everyone that does earnestly and sincerely believe in God would see the exact same deity. Besides all of that, is God not capable of reaching us, regardless of our belief? Can he not speak to us through a burning bush, or meet us on the Damascus Road? It seems to me he is completely capable of overcoming our so-called blurry vision. He is completely capable of interacting with us in the physical world, so the original objection still stands. Is God a trickster then? Is he trying to hide and only if you are clever enough you will find him? No, that is not the God I believed in at all. The God I believed in was waiting on the doorstep, knocking. Perhaps the devil is deceiving everyone else. He tricks people into thinking that God's knocking is just the wind at the door. No, that can't be true either. For God is much more powerful than the devil and would be able to silence him. It would make more sense for God to reveal himself to everyone. Then people could decide whether to follow him or not, whether they should obey his word or not. Does a world with many religions, each with their own deity and theology, reflect a world with a God that desires a personal relationship or a God as a man-made construct? If we were living in a world with a personal God, then we should all be hearing from the same God. If our theology differed from the main group, God would simply correct us. After all, once our divine sense was fixed, our divine hearing should be corrected as well, would it not? If God was a man-made construct, then we would expect to see a variety of gods, religions, and denominations as people simply tried to guess what a god may be like. It was plain to me that the man-made construct version of God is what our world looks like. In fact, the history of humankind only shows us imaginary gods. The gods of Greece, Egypt, and Rome were all imaginary gods. Most Christians will even admit to that. Many people in the evangelical Christian community claim to hear God telling them something. If what they hear disagrees with what the others claim to have heard, then they are at an impasse. I saw a lot of church splits during my time at college where this was exactly the case. It makes no sense for God to reveal himself only to a handful of people and then expect those people to accurately pass along his message. That message would be misinterpreted and would be subject to personal agendas. People would end up trusting the messenger more than the message. For me, this was the final thread, the final blow to the pillars of my foundation. My foundation crumbled as though it was made from sand and blew away as if it was dust in the wind. I had been processing all of this on my walk home from work after meeting with my colleague. At the moment I stepped into my apartment, I realized there was no God. 
I paused and I looked around. I realized God was not there, nor had he ever been. The knocking I had heard was just the wind. In the description of this video, I've listed several resources on this topic. Please take a look at them. In the final video of this series, the epilogue, I talk about the first few months after coming to the conclusion there was no God. I hope to see you there.